Hello friends, my name is Zach. Welcome back to Watch Pile, the show where I am going through my blind buy stack of movies and just uh, watching and reviewing them as I go. Today is going to be a little bit of a special episode, I guess, kind of, because Alyssa and I went to a horror convention two weekends ago now. I don't know, I've completely lost track of time. And uh, picked up some cool stuff, got to meet some cool people, so... I'm actually going to go through some of the stuff that I got because some of you have asked for collection tour and you know when we get the channel to 5,000 subscribers I will be doing a collection tour but until then you know I'm just going to go through some of the things I got to kind of give you an idea of what my collection looks like. So we're going to start with movies that I have watched recently as the show is meant to be. So the first movie that we're going to talk about today I actually don't have it with me because I let my boss <laughs> at work borrow it, but a while ago I watched Mail Order Murder, the story of Wave Productions. This is the first film in the Saturn's Core audio video catalog, which is a new, newer partner label with Vinegar Syndrome. Um, the movie tells the story of Wave Productions, a movie studio, basically run and operated and created by this guy, Gary Whitson. Basically, the studio, over time, you know, through Gary's desire to like make these movies, eventually he opened it up to where people could mail in their ideas and then pay like a fee and then they would just make this movie. So the guy has like 400 something movies that he's done because they do these custom videotapes and it was all through the mail, hence mail order murder. It was a really interesting documentary. There were a lot of interviews with Gary, a lot of interviews with some of the actresses that sort of became like his crew, you know, women that he worked with often uh, within these movies. Other interviews with people in the sort of indie shot on video horror movie scene in the 90s especially. Um, I really liked it. It was really interesting, really informative. If you're into documentaries, especially horror documentaries, I, I would for sure recommend checking it out because... It, it was just fascinating to see this aspect of horror. The next movie we're going to talk about today is actually from Wave Productions. It happens to be the second release from Saturn's Core, and that is Psycho Sisters. So Psycho Sisters is an extremely low-budget, you could even say micro-budget, film about three sisters who, in the very beginning of the film, one of them is uh, raped and murdered, actually. This one right here in the middle, played by Tina Krause. The other two sisters basically decide to just get their revenge on not only the men who raped and killed their sister, but all men, which <laughs> ends up lending oddly some humor to the film because they just sort of take out their frustration on anybody they come across. I really enjoyed the film. You know, I am a fan of low-budget slashers and shot on video stuff you know of course the genre is hit or miss there's some that are a little more difficult to get through but generally i just find it fascinating that they exist so psycho sisters falls right into that category and i i thought it was a it was a fun afternoon watch kills in the film are a little silly and drawn out as with many of the kills in wave production movies the stranglings are a staple in in the films. Uh, they tend to go on for five minutes or so, so it's a little crazy. You know, I think the acting is there. It's it's good. The camera work is pretty steady. You know, there's not a whole lot of like movement and things like that. It's cinematography, but it's it's micro budget. Like that's what you come for. This is what you expect. So the next and last film I watched recently. The last couple episodes I've done four films, but this time I only watched three. And I just figured we'd supplement the rest with the horror hound Hall. Look, mouthful. I recently found this at a record store in Cincinnati. This is Harvest Lake. This is a limited edition Blu-ray. It's directed by Scott Shermer, who directed Found which we reviewed over on Couple of Creeps a while ago. I initially bought it because I thought that the movie might qualify for Couple of Creeps, and I just kind of popped it in the other day just to check it out, see what it was about. And I'm glad that I did because I don't think that the film is extreme enough for the stuff that we cover on Couple of Creeps. 
However, it is still explicit. I think just more like sexually explicit, which is, you know, fine. But the movie basically, I mean, when you boil it down, it's basically about some people that go out into the woods and get seduced by an alien and then, you know, fuck it for eternity. Like literally, I guess. I don't, I don't know. That's what I got from the film. So, you know, maybe I, I missed something. The one thing I enjoyed about the movie Honestly, with all of the sexual overtones, because, you know, that's what the film is primarily about, in that comes a gay sex scene. And I actually was really happy to see it just because nothing bad happens during it. Like, it's it's a genuine, affectionate love scene. It sort of shatters your perception of what Hollywood kind of normally depicts gay men as. So... I really uh, appreciated and, and like thought that the movie was that much better for including that. Also, you know, we talk about it on Couple of Creeps, but for as many boobs as in the movie, you saw dicks too, which was nice. So those are just the films that I've watched recently. Uh, and now I will show you some of the things that I picked up from Horror Hell. So if you follow me on Instagram, um, at BenderButt, if you're interested, you might know that I collect VHS tapes, I don't know. If you, you know, we don't watch a ton of tapes on a couple of creeps or monster movies, but I do collect them and conventions typically offer a fun place to find some tapes and go hunting. So I did get a couple tapes. I also enjoy getting my VHS tapes signed by celebrities. That's kind of like my little thing. So I managed to get a few tapes signed. But the first tape that I found and picked up was Graveyard Shift. Listen, and I absolutely love this movie. It's got Brad Dorff in it. It has Andrew Divoff, Stephen King story, and uh, it's just great. You know, we quote it all the time, especially Brad Dorff in the movie. It's, God damn! He's fantastic. Um, so I had to pick that up so that we can watch it when we're going to bed sometimes, because that's what we do. Next tape I managed to find was Ghost Story. I actually found them at the same booth. Uh, Alyssa wanted me to pick up Ghost Story because she's never seen it, and neither have I. I'm just looking at the back here and see that Fred Astaire is in it, which is kind of cool to see him in a uh, horror movie. I love seeing actors do something out of their norm. Like, I love Wait Until Dark, which is an Audrey Hepburn film. It's like the only sort of like horror thriller that she starred in. And uh, it's actually a really, really great movie. A couple celebrities I met during Horror Hound, which was really exciting. So first, I met... Michael Gornick, and I had him sign my Creep Show 2 VHS. He is the director of Creep Show 2. He was really nice. I talked to him for a little bit. I told him that I think the raft is maybe the best Creep Show segment. I mean, in my opinion, it's certainly up there as one of my favorites. Uh, he said that he gets that a lot nowadays. It used to be that Old Chief Woodenhead was everyone's favorite segment, but in the last few years, he, the raft has really come up in popularity. So that was nice to talk to him. Next person I got to meet that I was really excited about was John Amplass from Martin, and he's also in Day of the Dead, and he plays Zombie Nate in the original Creep Show. He worked a lot with Romero, um, so it was really, really cool to meet him. He was very excited to sign a Martin tape. He said he was, you know, really enjoyed that movie and uh, loves sort of seeing people appreciate it, you know, for what it is. Because I feel like it's an under-seen Romero movie because he's so popular for his zombie films. But Martin is definitely one that deserves more love. All right, the last signature I managed to get this time around was... Adrian Barbo, Alyssa and I met her together. We were very excited and we had to have her sign Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, which was great because I set the tape down in front of her and she said, oh my gosh, this might be only the second one of these I've ever signed, which, you know, I, <laughs> I do enjoy making a little bit of an impact on the celebrities. You know, it's a lot of times, it's the only time you'll ever meet them and it doesn't make any difference, you know, whatsoever, but when you stand out a little bit, it's, it's, a, it's kind of fun. Of course, she plays the villain, Simone, in the film, and it was nice because she didn't have any pictures of the character on her table or, or anything like that, so 
you know, she did say that when she went in to do the voice acting for this film, they didn't tell her that she was supposed to have a French Creole accent until she was in the vocal booth. So she kind of just had to muddle her way through it. And of course you can't even tell because she's wonderful. So that's everybody that I was able to meet at Horror Hound. Uh, and I'm just going to show you a few of the things that I picked up from the boutique labels. Um, actually, first, I, you know, I picked up this high tension type O negative mashup shirt from London 1888. It was an instant buy for me. I mean, I didn't even know it existed. I saw it and I was like, come on, gotta have it. Love high tension, love type O negative. Oh, it's just so good. It's such a good shirt. So the first thing I picked up, I stopped by Severn Table to see my friends Matt and Cohen. We came home with the Blood for Dracula film by Paul Morrissey. Alyssa and I recently watched the Andy Warhol documentary on Netflix, and knowing that he sort of produced, signed off on this, uh, and Flesh for Frankenstein, I, I felt like I had to pick them up and just see what they were about and, you know, how, if there was any sort of influence from Andy on the films. So, of course, that being said, I did also pick up Flesh for Frankenstein from Vinegar Syndrome. Again, was just interested after watching the Warhol documentary, which I would highly recommend. It was very sad, but it was incredibly well done and it really did a good job of helping you to understand how the high art world views popular artists because you know all art is subjective we are the ones who place value on people's artwork but when you have a famous artist like andy warhol who becomes an icon they help you understand the explanation of to like why he is an icon so it was really interesting, so definitely recommend that, but I'm very excited to check out Flesh for Frankenstein and Blood for Dracula, just to see what they're about. So still with Vinegar Syndrome, that's everything else that I picked up during this convention, but I had to grab Auntie Lee's Meat Pies because like four people told me that I had to watch it. So yeah, I, I just, I just, I bought it because why not? I'm very excited about this film because it falls into that shot on video micro budget territory, but this is Pathogen. Now this film was conceived by a 12 year old girl who went on to direct the film when she was 15. The story behind it really made me want to pick it up and check it out because I think like that's fantastic. Like a 12 year old who eventually puts together a movie when they're 15 and it gets released, I mean, I have to see it. So the last thing I picked up at the convention, much like Pathogen, where I just had to see the story of the film, the fact that it exists and everything, I went ahead and grabbed New York Ninja, finally, from Vinegar Syndrome. This is their VSP release, Vinegar Syndrome Pictures. I, there's so many sub-labels and partner labels to Vinegar Syndrome, sometimes it's hard to keep track, but boy, do they put out quality stuff. This particular film is exciting because Vinegar Syndrome actually found the negatives for the film and put it together themselves because it wasn't edited, there was no sound to it, there was nothing. All there was was footage and Vinegar Syndrome took it upon themselves to create a score. They hired a band to create a score and they hired actors to dub over the voices. They edited the film together, tried to compile a story so I just, I had to, I had to grab it. And especially an edition like this, you know, where it just opens and it's so beautiful. Uh, comes with the film and a booklet here. It's, it's awesome. And it's magnetic. It's a nice box. Just had to grab that. So that is it for this episode of Watch Pile. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. And subscribe to our channel for more videos from me and from a couple of creeps and monster movies here soon. Again, if we get the channel up to 5,000 subscribers, I will do a collection tour. I'm not really sure how I'm going to go about it, but I will go through and show you guys some autographs in my tape collection and Blu-ray collection and things like that. So if you are inclined, please share this on social media and let's get those subscribers up. 
Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, I'm still working on a catchphrase, as if I need one. <laughs>